The Elk gets an SD card interface and a memory expansion. Back in the spring we looked at a SD card interface for the Acorn Electron, a first. And uh, there was a limited production run of these cards that they plugged on the back of your Elk and the SD card dangled off the end on this kind of slightly strange arrangement. Quite a lot of games worked and a few didn't. Usually the ones you really, really needed to play for Chini Vision, like Rig Attack the other week, which refused to load. But when you've got nothing else for the system, then, well, what else can you have? But there's a new interface in town. It's the Acorn Electron Elk SD64, and it aims to solve the problems that the previous interface had by adding 32K of extra memory that gets around the loading problems some of the games had. It costs £10 more than the previous interface, £39.99, available on eBay from Dr. Bomb Crater, and turned up in a couple of days in this little anti-static bag and it's got a 3D printed case. Seen some of these with screws underneath but this one doesn't have any screws and appears to be clipped together. Full size SD card interface on the back which means you can't reuse your mini one unless you've got an adapter from your previous interface and I don't really generally recommend people use those tiny little cards in adapters because yeah saw someone using one in a video camera thought that's a really bad idea but still you get a full-size SD card interface there, and it can take cards formatted up to 8 gigabytes. And it claims to work with nearly all Acorn Electron games, and the problem was games that required paging to memory location $E00. So what you do is you plug the card onto the back of your Electron. If you're like me, you've still got your little protector on the back. Take that off. Uh, it's recommended if you don't have a protector like that, you do clean the connector before you put it onto the machine. Just struggling one-handed here. Clips on. And then you need to prep an SD card. I just copied my old Beep MMB file over from my mini SD card. And that's what it loads. You don't just load on a load of images like you do with a Spectrum or Commodore 64 SD card interface. You have to have the Beeb MMB file, which will come with a menu system built in. And adding new games is a little bit painful, to be honest, but you shouldn't need to do that. So you boot your Electron up, and it comes up with Acorn Electron 64K now, double the memory. Acorn Electron MFS SW RAM EPP. That means the interface is being loaded into the sideways RAM, which has been introduced with the uh, extra memory expansion and it says RH plus one. You type in dboot zero and you should, after a few seconds, get the menu system up. It's not the fastest menu system in the world. I believe this is down to the menu system itself and not the interface. And yeah, the interface could do with a bit of a little bit of refinement because you have to press the function keys which involves holding down caps lock and a number to go to a different letter and then you select which game you want but let's load in a game and see if it works at random so there's a game let's load a game in at random we're going to load in a question of sport black screen hopefully it takes a few seconds to load in is it going to load yep no right one of these things with these b files is you sometimes get these little menus beforehand perhaps select a game or various bits and we've got to select our frame code and uh, yeah we all we're gonna do is see if this game loads because we know it ain't any good and look there's bill beaumont staring at you and it seems to have loaded in which is good because this has got uh, multiple questions it can load in as well so if a game like this loads hopefully we're we're looking good Let's try another game. And we're loading in Repton 3. You know, it's like Boulder Dash, but not as good. 
And you get an option for a cheat here as well, which is nice. And hopefully you've got a much greater compatibility than the previous interface, thanks to this extra memory and the fact the menu's loaded into sideways RAM. That all seems to load it up okay. Here's a test, Rig Attack, which I couldn't get to load on the old interface and had to load a tape image. And it's loaded straight in, which hopefully means all this memory location problem thing is solved. Exile is absolutely fine. And of course, disregard all that mess around the edge of the screen because the elk has limited resources. They've actually stored game code in that area around the edge of the screen. It's not decorative. That's game code. Save memory. Speaking of games that save memory, here's Barbarian 2 on the elk. And yes, it does look a little bit odd with big kind of, we're well, playing the game in the letterbox. And again, that's saving RAM. But again, I think this is a game that didn't load on the old interface. At least I don't remember playing it. Chucky Egg on the old interface, fine, absolutely fine here as well. Solid Gold, Classic, BBC Micro and Elk, and uh, Spectrum and lots of other formats as well. Game. Last Ninja 2, I think this is coded by the same guy who did Barbarian 2. And again, memory saving going on because although your elk now has 64k of ram these games are all coded for 32k it's amazing these games got like last ninja 2 got ported to the electron really can't have been that big a market by the time this game came out and indeed nearly every game i loaded ran I had one game that didn't load, but it seemed to crash out into basic, and it seemed to be a problem running the game, which makes me think that there was something wrong with the game to begin with, or it's detected some kind of problem. But before on the old interface, perhaps 25% of games didn't work. It was made worse by the fact it always seemed to be the ones you wanted to play the most, certainly if I was reviewing them for Chini Vision, e.g. Rig Attack. But now I've only had one game so far fail to load and I'm not actually convinced that was the interface. It seemed to load in, but there was something wrong with the basic listing at some stage. That said, I think on my test so far, I think we can say there is at least a 95% compatibility, probably more, which is a vast improvement. The new interface is £10 more than the old one, but it has the advantage. It comes in a case and it doesn't have the SD card interface dangling off on a load of cables that can disconnect from the main interface board very, very easily. I did recommend the old interface when it came out with the caveat that it wasn't completely compatible. And I think it was slightly less compatible than I thought having tested this over an extended period of six months now. But that didn't matter so much because it was the only game in town. This new interface is a vast improvement. As I said, we've got at least 95% compatibility, probably more. Everything I loaded, apart from one game, works, and it opens up a whole new world of gaming on your Electron and saves you having to load from cassettes or cassette images. For me, it's a must-own, but of course, I will report back if I come across any problems.